they whined. They bitched and whined for years saying, oh, there weren't enough prosecutions of the rioters during the BLM marches. And, and, and so their answer is to not prosecute people that tried to take down the United States government. It is sheer insanity. If you think that maybe the Justice Department should have done a better job in 2020, the, the answer is not to do a lousy job in 2023. It's to actually do better. But I don't know. So, Doris, um, you, you, you remember 1968, the chaos that happened in 1968. Uh, people like my parents in the suburbs of Atlanta who were Democrats, who became Republicans after the rioting, after the chaos, after the anarchy that they just couldn't process. This wasn't the America that they grew up in. This wasn't FDR's America. My mom voted for JFK. This wasn't JFK's America. And what I heard growing up was deterrence, 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 right? So I looked up deterrence this morning, just did a quick Google check, and this is, this is what I got. Deterrence is a theory that criminal penalties do not just punish violators, like Stuart Rhodes, but also discourage other people from committing similar offenses. Many people point to the need to deter criminal actions after high-profile incidents in which an offender is seen to have received too light a sentence. Well, you know, as I keep saying, with no apologies, I'm still a conservative. I still believe that. <laughs> and yet you have Donald Trump telling white nationalists to stand back and stand by. You have Donald Trump, like, saluting convicts that beat the hell out of cops with American flags. You have Donald Trump actually, actually paying tribute. I can't even believe this. What if George McGovern had done this to a convict choir? A convict choir. George McGovern would have been, like, like sent to, sent to Guam for the rest of the 72 campaign. Like Republicans would have freaked out. And yet here they are saying, oh, you know what? The DOJ, they're, they're just too tough. They're too tough. We're going, all of these people you see right here, scaling the walls of the Capitol, all of the people committing sedition against the United States, all of the rioters, we're going to pardon them. To send message, of course, to other rioters in the future, Doris. That's what it'll do. Well, I think the most important thing you're seeing is that the accountability of law is holding up. We may have felt for a period of time that the Justice Department was moving too slowly. Where are they? But they're winning case after case. Big sentences are going down. And the real battle that's going on right here is the battle for public sentiment. The country has to come to the understanding of what you just said, that what happened on January 6th was one of the greatest violations in the history of our country. A peaceful transition of power was trying to be upset by these people. And if the country more and more understands that, we had a competing narrative that took place after a while from Trump and from his allies that, no, it was just a bunch of tourists there. They weren't doing anything wrong. They're heroes. That narrative is not going to stand in my judgment. As more and more of these accountabilities take place, as the law makes its way here, Lincoln said, as long as you've got public sentiment, you have everything. Without it, you have nothing. That's what a democracy is about. And my optimism about this is each one of these cases come down. Every single one of these cases, whether it's E. Jean Carroll or whether it's Dominican um, lawsuit, and now other ones are coming down. The country is a, a rational country. They're going to see that something is very wrong with a, the, these things that are happening, and that counter narrative that Trump and now DeSantis are trying to hold is not going to it's not going to break through. The suburbs are not going to accept that. So I think we uh, we got to no. say that Lincoln's right. With public sentiment, anything is possible. Without it, nothing is. And I think we're on the way. I, I could not agree more, Doris. You look at the convictions. You look at the fact that about 400 people. Uh, 400 rioters have already received sentences for their crimes that they committed. Uh, over 200 uh, have actually been incarcerated for that. Many more are serving uh, serving their sentences under home arrest. 
uh, and and law enforcement's going after another 350 people, asking for help, tracking them down as well. And you were right. Uh, in one case after another, in the 63 cases uh, during during the 2020 challenge, uh, every single federal judge, whether they were a former ACLU member or a former member of the Federalist Society, stood strong and stood against the overturning of an American presidential election. The Supreme Court did the same. Even the three justices appointed by Donald Trump, you go down the line. And, and the rule of law has made a huge difference. And, and Rev, uh, you, you look at the 400 rioters uh, who have already uh, been, been uh, sentenced, and you look at the, the, the time that's being served by, by 200 uh, rioters. Um, it, it's just, it's fascinating. This is what conservatives would usually say, hey, this is what we want. Law and order. That's how we hear. Law and order, law and order, law and order. Well, it seems now that Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis are saying, yeah, law and order for them, but not for us. You raise the uh, point that is most troubling to me, and that is that it is blatantly clear that uh, they're not talking about law and order. They're talking about where they would apply only when they seem to feel it's appropriate or something that they politically agree with. Uh, because notice what is being said here. They're, sa they're not saying that uh, we didn't break the law. They're saying, well, you are targeting us and not others. Well, if, if the three of us sitting here around the table broke the law and only one got caught, that does not mean, well, you should have got, uh, uh, you singled me out. It means you should have got all three of us. They broke the law. They were guilty of sedition. And they're asking people to let them go because of their politics. And to have a former president, a leading contender now, and the second leading contender say that they would even weigh, consider excusing people that are criminal, that have broke the law. What does that do to the letter of the law? You talk about Bill L uh, BLM or, or civil rights. We protested if we felt people were being targeted that had not broke laws. When we saw people riot in Ferguson and other places, we didn't go in and say they should be pardoned. We didn't make excuses for them. So the comparison is not there. When people break the law on the left or the right, they break the law and face the penalty. You do not say you will pardon people for breaking the law of a government that you want to be in charge of. Either you have laws or you don't. Just to echo uh, Reverend Al here, I mean, what's been so interesting to watch this over the last several months in that some of these insurrectionists, people who are sympathetic to the insurrectionists, Oath Keeper members, whatever you want to call them, they have been deterred, right? One of my favorite uh, items of reporting was around the uh, indictment of Donald Trump when there was a former Oath Keeper, former insurrectionist who said basically, I'm rooting for them, but I'm retired, right? That tells you he's been deterred. Donald Trump is the person here who thinks he's living above the law or beyond the law, who has not changed his behavior, who continues, who has continued in recent months to call for people to protest, to even uh, to to come out surrounding him post his indictment. He is the guy who has not yet been held accountable. That is why people are still frustrated, who want to see that happen. And now that, that all of these people, including Stuart Rhodes, has now been sentenced to 18 years, the big question is, what happens to the guy who's at the top of the pyramid? So